goodness. Look at that. That is beautiful. Look at the juices coming out down the bottom. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> listen to that. Oh my goodness. Look at that baby crackle. Crispy pork belly. Um, where do I start with this? This is absolutely one of my favorite things to eat. Now, there are different leagues of pork crackle and I'm an absolute crackle snob. Now, I personally like the, the, the pork crackle that you get with the tiny little bubbles, you know. Um, it's not a hard texture, it's not definitely not chewy or tough. It's, it's really quite light, almost like you'd be chewing pork crackle or crackling uh, or cracklings or, or chicharron out of out of a bag like it's super duper crispy but it's not dry it's moist you get that fat underneath and it's just I, I one of my absolute favorite things to eat now the secret absolute secrets to pork belly is just two things uh high heat and dry skin now if you only had to those two things you'd nail it almost every time i've I've basically simplified this recipe, removed a lot of unnecessary things that I've found that you just don't need in, in, in the course of making excellent, or if not perfect, pork belly. So I removed the boiling water. I no longer salt and vinegar overnight. I definitely do not score. You do not need any of those things to have the best absolute ever pork belly. And I'm gonna teach you guys how to perfect it and help you to nail it too. So please don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that button, and I'll help you guys uh, um, uh, achieve your goals with and kick, kick, kick all those barbecue and pork belly goals that you want to achieve. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching and onto the video. Okay guys, so this is the most crucial and important part of the whole process. You need to get the skin just right to make it get those really tiny raised bubbles going on. Now, what you'll see here for starters, look how flexible that pork is. Now it's a bit hard to see with this light, but you can actually see it's the pink, the, the pork itself is a whitey color. Now you actually want it to go from that flexible white color to like a pink color, and you want it to be quite hard and rigid to the touch. Okay. Um, now before it goes in the fridge overnight, minimum. Now if your pork's, if your pork has been vacuum sealed, or sitting in a backpack or plastic in its juices for too long, you'll have a you'll have to dry it out that little bit longer. So I go to the trouble of getting my pork from a butcher uh, where it hasn't been sitting in plastic um, because you'll speed up the drying process and won't have to usually dry it too long at all. So if it's been sitting in a vacuum seal, I'll usually give it two to three days. But again, you just need to really look for that pink color and that hard, that hard, um, uh, that hard texture where it's hard and the, the pork, sorry, it's hard and the pork doesn't bend. Okay, so that's the main things you're looking for. Um, what you'll notice here on the side, on the back here as well, quite often there's a bit of a flap here. I'll actually take that off. This extra muscle that sits here uh, it is more inclined to dry out. So I'll take that off and I'll cook that separately. But just remember guys, a minimum of overnight, if it's been sitting in a vac seal, you need to give yourself more time like that. Grab yourself your little fleshlight, um, anything, some forks will do, um, uh, some skewers will do. Just hit that a whole bunch of times to put the tiny little holes in it. This isn't necessary, but you'll find you'll get lots more little holes in it and you'll get the tiny little perfect little bubbles. Okay, so once I've stabbed it with my flashlight, my meat tenderizer available on Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link for you. Um, yeah, just I put it on a, like a cake rack and put it in a dish and put it in the, the fridge. You don't want it to be uh, in an area with low uh, air circulation. You want them in the area of high air circulation so it will dry out quicker and better. 
Alrighty guys, so we're back. Now, have a look at that skin. It's hard, okay? It's gone from a whitey color to a pink color. But look, the pork's not pliable anymore. It's hard, it's rigid. That is really super duper important, okay? Do not stop until it's like that. Give yourself enough time. Sometimes it's one day, sometimes it's two days, sometimes it's three. Depends on your fridge, depends on where you got it from, whether it's been back sealed, whether it's from a butcher, etc. Okay? So we're gonna season that now. And all I'm gonna do is get some salt. Yeah, you can put whatever you want on there. If you wanna follow one of my other recipes for shu yup, uh, which has five spice powder and some garlic powder, you can do that. I'm just gonna put salt for today. This is going into a bun me. Okay. And that's it. Now do not salt the other side until it just goes on. Okay? Now you want to make sure you wait until it's just about to go on. Okay? Because what will happen if you stick salt on that now, what do you reckon that's gonna do? It's gonna draw the moisture out of the skin if there's any left. And that's gonna cause problems with the crackle. You do not want moisture on your skin because that is the enemy of crackle. Okay, so we're gonna stick this on now and we'll come back uh, in a moment. Okay guys, so you wanna load this up. Now, you can use charcoal, you can use heat beads, briquettes, whatever you wanna use. I find um, uh, that charcoal puts out a lot more BTUs, aka heat and energy. Uh, so I prefer that and I prefer the flavor as well. Um, but load, the, load this up fully because you want to get this quite hot now. You don't don't have to use one of these. I've got a JG offset plate. Um, I find it really handy and really useful to use. Uh, you don't need one of those. You can just put some, some brick pavers or something similar if you'd like. Um, just basically to, to create uh, something to hold the charcoal up and to keep it to one side. So you want that fully loaded. And we're going to get this going at 250 Celsius or 500 degrees Fahrenheit. A couple of more bits in there. Okay. And so that's what you want there. Okay guys, 250 degrees Celsius, pop the drip tray in, pop the grill grate in, and then what we're going to do, stick this in a bit of an angle just over here for the time being, and then I'm going to pop the pork skin side towards the fire for the moment, and that's just to so when she cooks, she doesn't curl up as much. Now we'll set that for about 10 minutes and come back shortly. Okay guys, it's actually been closer to 15 minutes. I've had to shuffle it forward a bit. All we're looking at is just so it's, um, uh, it's not gonna curl up too much when we flip it now. So what we're gonna do here, it's handy to have some gloves that you don't mind grabbing some hot stuff with. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to spray a little bit of oil on. So this is just add, uh, uh, so I can add the salt and it adds as a bit of uh, uh, a way to make the salt stick. But on top of that as well, it'll assist uh, with uh, conducting some of the heat to the pork belly, or to the skin in particular. I might spray that a bit more just to make sure that that sticks. Okay, and then what we're going to do here, uh, okay, just kind of pick this up. Okay, now we're going to flip this around this time. Going to flip it this way. Okay. And now, just going to watch this bit here, because uh, this is where, this is the most crucial bit. 
Okay, that's going to have to do. On, pull this back a bit. Okay, alrighty guys, lid on. Now watch this like a hawk. You want to be checking this literally every couple of minutes. Okay, we'll come back shortly. So guys, just got to watch this bit like a hawk, okay? This is where all the magic happens. See, look at that already. Look at that already over a couple minutes. Look at that baby. Oh, did you see that bubble come up? Oh, look at that guy. People accuse me of using an air fryer all sorts of stuff but just, okay, just go move that a tiny bit shift that camera people accuse me of using air fryers and heat guns and uh, deep frying it but as you can see it's happening in real time right in front of your eyes just takes a little bit of extra work but you get that absolutely perfect crackle so we're going to rotate this again Glove on this time, I learnt from my mistake. Okay. Again. Okay guys, so now we're gonna do the slow cook portion of this cook. So now I'm gonna flip around. Pop it that way. Look at that. It's magic. Okay. And then uh, we're gonna cook that for about 45 minutes to an hour at about 180 degrees Celsius. Uh, we're gonna check for tenderness after that and we're gonna see you back then. See you shortly. Okay, just back here checking for for doneness, aka tenderness. And what we're looking for is to slide in and out like a hot knife does butter. Now that's gonna happen at, when we're cooking at these temps at around 200 to 205 Fahrenheit. And I'll, I'll do a, uh, a translation or a conversion for you. But that's done essentially now. Now, if it's not quite crackled up in a couple of spots, you can give it one little blast at the end, but I generally don't bother. Cool guys, let's, let's slice this up shortly. Alrighty guys, the moment of truth. You don't really even have to scrape this with a knife, but I will, just for you guys. You can tell that's crispy. Look at that. Oh, that's a bit slippery. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Okay, now I like to cut this upside down. Up to you, but just have to watch any wet patches there. Now, when you do it, because any of the, if you get the crackle in the wet patch, you can actually destroy the crackle. So I'll, I'll actually flop. Flip that board around. Now we're going to slice this upside down. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> listen to that. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Mm. Bit of a barky bit there. Look at that, it's falling apart. Absolutely magnificent. And that crackle, next level crackle. 
Look at that, guys. So juicy. Oh, here we go. Again. Just got to get through the... There we go. Oh, magic. Oh, look at that. Bit of a smoke ring there. Gorgeous, guys. Mm, and the smell. Look, look at the meat, you can just tear it off. Mm, that is magic, guys. Here we go guys, look at that, I'm not sure if you can see that, oh, I'm not really close, oh, it's zooming into my face, and look, you can just, you can just break that apart with your fingers, I'll take some of the bark off, oh, but look, you can just, you can just break that apart, it's slippery, mmm, now for this bit, now for the crackle. Mmm. Mmm. That is 100% just so incredible. Mmm, that's magic. So good. So, so good. Mmm.